And well, it might seem untrue or maybe even like a fantasy, but it is true. Raiden Antilag 2 has just been announced. You teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> it has not only been announced, but it is already available for you to use. Yes, you heard that right. Although it is just available in one game, Counter-Strike 2, as Raiden Anti-Lag 2 is now more or less like Nvidia's Reflex, where you have the Anti-Lag 2 option inside the game menu instead of being on the driver's side. On the previous Anti-Lag Plus that we had, uh, which is basically Anti-Lag 2, while Anti-Lag Plus was on the driver's side, Anti-Lag 2 is on the game settings. Inside the game means that AMD needs to work with the developers in order to implement Anti-Lag 2 in their games, which... Uh, is harder to do compared to the driver side where they just had to implement profiles for each game but at the same time it avoids issues like VAC banning that we've seen with Anti-Lag Plus with Counter-Strike 2 uh, some games like Apex Legends and so on so it avoids all those issues although it is hard harder to implement but at the same time it might be able to deliver even better results compared to Anti-Lag Plus and that's why AMD unlaunched the Raiden Anti-Lag Plus, although I believe they could still have Anti-Lag Plus for single-player games, which would be completely fine. And I already tested it with Counter-Strike 2 and I can tell you right away that there are different scenarios. Scenarios where Anti-Lag 2 actually benefits, well, not Anti-Lag 2, we benefit from Anti-Lag 2, of course, and there are some other scenarios where we don't benefit that much, but we'll get there. But before, let's lay an eye on today's sponsor to kind of help the channel, you know? Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Firstly, let's just read a bit about Antilag 2 technical preview, and then we have an introduction of Raiden Antilag. In 2019, we introduced AMD Raiden Antilag, our in-driver technology designed to lower click-to-response latency for delivering more responsive gaming experiences for Radeon gamers. It has since become one of our most popular software features. Last year, we introduced Raiden Antilag Plus in the AMD Software Adrenaline Edition application, an updated version of this technology that delivered even lower latency. Although many of you enjoyed the benefits of Anti-Lag Plus across your favorite games, a few of you encountered issues which led us to roll back this feature so we could make some improvements to ensure a better experience for all. And I mean, this was like months ago. And since then we know many of you have been eagerly waiting for its return. Of course we did. Especially for games with high latency due to the engine, like The Witcher 3, for example, where I tested Radiant Anti-Lag and it made a huge difference, with basically no impact in FPS numbers. Now we have Radiant Anti-Lag Counter-Strike 2 logos. We're happy to share with you that our upgraded latency reduction technology is back as AMD Radiant Anti-Lag 2. This updated version takes Anti-Lag to the next level and is now a game-integrated technology rather than an in-driver solution. We've partnered... partnered Partnered, <laughs> partnered uh, closely with Valve to integrate Radiant Anti-Lag 2 in Counter-Strike 2 and the game update and technical previews AMD Software Adrenaline Driver Edition is available now to enable it for a more responsive esports experience and the ultimate in low latency gaming. Okay. Radian Anti-Lag technology controls the pace of the CPU to make sure it aligns with the GPU, reducing the amount of CPU work that gets queued up. This decreases the input to display response times, making games more responsive. Okay, nice, nice explanation. As a driver-based solution, the initial version of Raiden Anti-Lag has been long available in the AMD Adrenaline software, blah blah blah, and can be enabled in any game, delivering lower latency for more responsive gameplay. And in some scenarios where we actually have some games having a really poor frame time like Crisis Remastered uh, when you enable ray tracing on AMD GPUs, Radian Anti-Lag on the driver base solution can actually uh, make things much, much smoother. So it's, uh, it's a great thing. And by the way, one of the things that we have now with Radian Anti-Lag 2 is that it supports all RDNA GPUs. While Radian Anti-Lag Plus was only supported by the 7000 series, Radian Anti-Lag 2 supports 5000, 6000 and 7000 series GPUs. So all of you with older GPUs can actually take advantage of Radian Anti-Lag 2, unlike with Anti-Lag Plus. 
And here we have an image with Counter-Strike 2 latency in milliseconds. We have 19 milliseconds but with a GRE, but as soon as we go to Anti-Lag 2, we have 11 milliseconds. With a 7800 XT at 4K, we went from 20 to 12 milliseconds as well. With a 7600 XT at 1440p, we went from 23 milliseconds to 14 milliseconds. With a 7700S, which is supposed to be, um, I don't really know what it is supposed to be, maybe a laptop GPU, we went from 31 milliseconds to 19 milliseconds, which is just insane. And with the, the 780M, the iGPU that you can see also in this channel, we went from 21 milliseconds to 16 milliseconds. And as you can see, we're using very high settings and that's for a reason, because depending on the settings and on your config, things will be different in terms of latency reduction and so on. Now, what you have to do is basically download and install the, um, the new Adrenaline, the new Adrenaline 24.5.1, which is a different driver from the usual 24.5.1. This is the 24.5.1 technical preview for Anti-Lag 2. You have the link here, of course. And then Anti-Lag, AMD Anti-Lag 2.0 will appear to you in the Counter-Strike 2 settings. And that's all you have to do. Download, install the driver, update Counter-Strike 2, and just this, the setting will appear. That's how it works. And now that you know how anti-lag works, what it is, and in what GPUs it will work, let's test it. So now in Counter-Strike 2, all you have to do is go to the settings menu, open it, go to the video options, advanced video, and then you have AMD Anti-Lag Plus 2.0 here. Anti-Lag Plus. Anti-Lag 2.0, it's the... Uh, it's the thing, it's the thing. <laughs> Until like 2.0 here, and it comes enabled by default, by the way. Uh, what you can do though, is that you can select, I believe it's Alt Shift L, yes. And as soon as you start clicking it, you click like six times, and this will appear here on the on the top left corner. It will appear the, the number of frames. This is kind of an over overlay from the AMD drivers, which is nice. When you're using Anti-Lag 2, of course, if you're not using it, only the FPS will appear. As for the settings I'm using, I'm running at 1440p, as you can see, and I'm running um, very high settings. I know that most of Counter-Strike 2 players won't run at very high settings, but it doesn't really matter because with my GPU, uh, very high settings is like medium settings to some other GPUs. But anyway, very high settings, but in the multi-sampling anti-aliasing mode, I'm using CMAA2, which is actually way, way lighter than, than the other options that we have, like two times MSAA, four times MSAA, but we'll test it in order for me to show you different scenarios. Now we have around, well, 400 frames and so on. So five milliseconds, six milliseconds, which is around that. As soon as I disable, because I can press the, the right control key, and as soon as I press the right control key, it will disable momentarily when I hold the, the control key, of course, it will disable the, the anti-lag too. As soon as I press it, we see basically no difference whatsoever. In terms of overall experience, I don't really see much of a difference. Once again, six milliseconds here. As soon as I disable anti-lag two, basically close to seven milliseconds, but around the same, basically no difference whatsoever in this scenario. Because like I told you, uh, anti-lag two basically sinks the GPU and the CPU in order to, to deliver lower latency, meaning that you actually need you actually you actually need to have the GPU the GPU being stressed in order to benefit from Radian anti-lag or Radian anti-lag 2. So what do we do basically? What we do is we increase the settings here. If we increase to let's say MSAA four times, yeah I see basically no difference here. I don't really know what's What's going on? Let's try eight times MSAA. Now we have nine milliseconds with anti-lag. As soon as I disable the anti-lag, oh my bad. Now we can see some difference, finally. From 11 milliseconds to 13 milliseconds, or in this case, 13 milliseconds. As soon as I enable anti-lag two, the latency goes down from 11 in this case to nine. Disable, 11 milliseconds, enable, 9 milliseconds. So, two or three frames difference in terms of GPU power, and at the same time, 
we have, um, well, we have lower latency. Once again, 7 milliseconds, disabling it, 8 milliseconds. 9 milliseconds, 8 milliseconds here, disabling it, 9 milliseconds. Basically, it depends on the scenario. Some maps are heavier, some maps are not as heavy. It depends on the scenario that you're playing at and the GPU. The lower in the GPU, the more load it will be on the GPU, and the more load you have on the GPU and the slower the CPU is, what will happen basically uh, since you're on a GPU bottleneck. Yeah, since you're on a GPU bottleneck, the Radiant Anti-Lag 2 will help more. Uh, but it will it will help way, way more in games, once again, like Witcher 3 and so on. So I really hope to see them uh, implementing Radiant Anti-Lag 2 because it is on those engines where we are really, really GPU bottlenecked that the differences of Anti-Lag make an actual sense. In this case, it does make sense in some scenarios, but the difference is so, so little. Once again, 7 milliseconds. As soon as I disable it, 8, 9 milliseconds. It's a 2 milliseconds difference. Well, with Vertigo, we're now having 7 milliseconds. With 8 times MSAA, of course, since this is an XTX and we're running only at 1440p. Oh, so many. What the hell? These bots are crazy. They're not even shooting. Maybe they're not shooting because there's an option for them not to shoot. Oh, 8 milliseconds. As soon as you go here, disable the anti-lag, we go to 9 milliseconds, which is basically the difference that we see, that we saw before. 2 milliseconds. Once again, 7 milliseconds. Disabling it, 8 milliseconds. But now we can actually see that disabling anti-lag 2 makes the FPS go higher than like with... Mirage, which seemed like really, really odd. So 390 FPS, more or less, almost 400 uh, without Anti-Lag 2. And with Anti-Lag 2, we go down to 380 something. So around 20 FPS difference in this scenario. But usually as the FPS are higher, the input latency is lower. But in this case, as soon as we enable Radiant Anti-Lag 2, although the FPS are lower, the input latency is also lower due to how they're making things work. So 490 something, enable anti-lag 380 something, but the input latency goes down to 6-7 milliseconds, which is actually quite nice. Now testing on a final map only, just to make sure. Um, by the way, once again, just recapping, you can use Alt-Shift-L in order to make appear or disappear this. These settings, I believe, yeah, just keep clicking on it till you get the, the layout you want. You can hold the control button, the right one, in order to enable or disable the anti-lag 2. For example, anti-lag 2 once again enabled, 9 milliseconds, 290 FPS. As soon as I press control, 290 something FPS and 10, 11 milliseconds. Anti-lag enabled, 9, 10, disabled. 11. Nothing really much more to show here. Depending on the settings, it will make difference, more or less. It really depends. As soon as you use CMAA2, and you are not actually GPU bottlenecked, you are CPU bottlenecked in this scenario, as soon as I enable the, the Radiant Anti-Lag, for example, disabling, I have 390 FPS, 400 FPS, as soon as I disable it, or enable the Radiant Anti-Lag 2, sorry. I have less FPS, but the frame times are basically the same. Now there's a different scenario. Let's imagine that you have, let's say like me, you have a 160 Hz monitor and you don't actually want to, let's say, to run at 400 FPS, you just need to run at 157 in order to, well, to be inside the refresh rate. Now what you can do is go, enable the Radeon Chill, in this case scenario, open the gaming settings on the software, enable Radeon Chill, in this case since I have a 160Hz monitor, I enable the Radeon Chill to 157, which is basically to avoid those FPS fluctuations, and what the Radeon Chill does here is basically once again in order to have a, a smoother gameplay, it not only locks the FPS, but it kind of syncs the, the CPU and GPU as well, it makes almost the same the anti-lag does, and in this scenario we have higher we have higher input latency, of course, 13 milliseconds, but since the GPU and CPU are basically on sync and we have locked frames, enabling 
or disabling anti-lag makes no difference. So I'm holding the control key and as you see, 13 milliseconds. I, I enable anti-lag too, 13 milliseconds as well. Exactly the same. But overall, it is a good thing to have. I believe that in most scenarios it will be... Yeah, it will be nice. And if they implement this in single player games, once again, The Witcher, Cyberpunk and so on, that will be where the where the gold is at. Because going like reducing the, the input latency to almost half is a lot of difference and does get noticeable. As for CS2, Counter-Strike 2, yeah. Minimal difference, especially if you're, locking the, if you're locking the frames. If you're not locking the frames, two milliseconds, three milliseconds. In most scenarios, for people with lower end GPUs, it might actually deliver more, like 10 milliseconds difference. And in those scenarios, yeah, it might, uh, it might help a bit. But at the same time, if you're using a lower end GPU, you'll most likely be using lower settings and if you're using lower settings the load will be more on the cpu and at the same time anti-lag 2 might not help that much because the load is on the cpu but anyway i mean it's it's a trade-off it's a trade-off i guess and well guys that's all for this video thank you very much for watching um once again you can use raiden anti-lag 2 it is available now download the 24.5.1 preview drivers technical preview drivers for anti-lag 2 uh update counter-strike 2 and just go to the game settings and enable it and you can make use of it right now once again it is available right now and just to recap once again um shift alt l in order to enable or disable the overlay and then kind of press control hold control once again hold it's the the english portuguese scenario <laughs> kind of hold control in order to enable or disable uh, the Radian anti like 2 momentarily in order for you to see the difference in um, frame times, the difference in, in input latency and so on. Thanks once again for watching and see you in the next video and don't forget, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what's your experience with Radian anti like 2. If it actually helped a lot in your scenario, if you have a mobile CPU for example or, or a mobile GPU and it helped a lot like the 7700S, if you have an iGPU and it helped a lot, if you have a lower end GPU and you didn't notice the difference just let me know because i'm interested in your results since mine were kind of well okay-ish let's say that two milliseconds difference so in some scenarios the difference might be more let me know in the comment section thank you very much and see you in the next video